presentation. So, without any further ado, would you please join with me in welcoming Apostle Brian Tamaki. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out today. It's, um, it's a beautiful time to be here in Auckland and standing for the nation, Israel. The nation that God loves, the nation that a Jew was born into this world that was to be the saviour of the planet. It's Jesus Christ. And so I proudly stand here today to say that I and many in this country of New Zealand are standing for Israel. At the same time, we condemn the terrorist acts that have been committed by Hamas, Hezbollah, and any other terrorism that's come from the Arab world against Israel that have murdered innocent civilians, women, children, and decapitating the heads of 40 babies off their bodies, and also putting that up online, these executions are broadcast across the world for everyone to see. This is no longer, that's not war. Killing babies and chopping their heads off is not war. And also war. putting that up across the world, this is genocide. This is genocide. They want to wipe the earth of Israel itself and every Jew. This, my friends, is World War III. The Holocaust too is already happening when you see this type of barbaric violence committed to a nation that was unaware and they take civilians out like that. This is all over the news, it's not new, but I think it's something that the country of New Zealand, who I think is asleep, the media in New Zealand is disgusting. I think the media of New Zealand is the real terrorist in the Southern Hemisphere. They, they block news, they have a narrative that is only theirs, and it's one that's destroyed our country. It's disgusting that we have the Eiffel Tower, we have London, the Big Ben, we have New York, we have many other nations around the world displaying the blue and white and the flags of Israel, yet New Zealand has got nothing. No Israeli flag flying from our parliament off the bridge. The uh, Sky Tower has a lot of colours up there, but I have not seen blue or white displayed at all. What the hell's wrong with my country? What the hell's wrong when politicians in this country cannot come out straight from their mouths, not only to denounce, which any human can do, of the barbaric violence, but they've stuttered, they've been slow in condemning the violence of Hamas on Israeli civilians, on women displayed as they mutilated their bodies, and those babies I talked about, hardly any reference from any of these politicians about this. In fact, they're hesitant to even say that Hamas is a terrorist organization. Chris Hipkins was asked the question today, should the Hamas organization be identified as a terrorist organization? He acted like he did when he was asked, what is a woman? You can easily, anybody could see that Hamas is a terrorist organization. Yet our outgoing, praise God, Prime Minister Hipkins could not even say out of his mouth to denounce the atrocities that Hamas has done and could not call them a terrorist organization. So he said, I have to confide to see what advice the other politicians can give me. Now that's Luxton, that's Peters, and that's Seymour, and the rest of the body. Most of them couldn't give a straight answer to say, this is an abhorrent, this is an absolute atrocity, this is, is not acceptable. They couldn't say that. Instead, some of the politicians came back and the leader of a political party in parliament said, I want to actually identify Israel as a terrorist organization. Well, I, you're pretty cold and stiff looking. I mean, I, it's cold today, but I am shocked that our parliament in this country 
is filled with anti-Semitism. Uh, the anti-Jews, we got, we got a parliament that strongly uh, is anti-Semitism. They're full of anti-Jewish people. I am disgraced, I'm disgusted in my country that there has been no actual voice of condemnation to the violence of babies and children and innocent civilians. I am disgusted that they instead want to call out Israel as a terrorist organisation. That's New Zealand politicians. I think we should get all those ones that are sympathisers with the Hamas and Hezbollah with their violence. We should get them all together in Parliament that believe in the cause of Hamas and we should deport them to Gaza and they should be kept there and not allowed to leave until it's all over. I, it's a disgrace today that they're too busy thinking of tomorrow and the next lot of what we've got to put up for the next three years of a lame duck, very soft parliament that can't even stand up to the atrocities that are causing this world. Now I want to say something else today is Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th is usually linked to bad luck and all sorts of other types of superstition. But only a day or two ago, in the last two days, the Hamas former leader came out on and broadcast it across the world and called for a day of holy war jihad across the world. He put it out, a war cry, that every person that believes in the cause of the Hamas and the Palestinians that want Israel totally eliminated and taken off this earth and exterminated should do these things on Friday the 13th. So he called the Arab world and all Islam and Muslims who believe in the cause of the Quran and he, he stated the tenets of Quran and some of them that our religious tenets are the most important to us than anything else. So he's called a holy war on the Friday the 13th. We're the first country in the world to be sitting on Friday the 13th. It's quite remarkable to me that we're standing here in the biggest city of our country, letting the world, rest of the world know who have yet to come into their Friday. Friday's still rolling on around the world. So we're sending a clear message against the jihad of the Muslim and the Arab world that would join in with Hamas to actually destroy the Jewish state and invade Israel, we send back now a declaration from the brotherhood of the firstborns of Christ. And we say now, we're pushing back and saying, we're coming against your jihads, we're coming against your orders of violence, for we are a movement of peace. And we do pray for the peace of Israel. We pray for the peace of every innocent Arab, including the Palestinians and the Jordanians. We pray for those of all the world that we are not and do not engage in violence and war. But as it was said by my friend earlier, it's an impossible ask that peace comes by a diplomat, United Nations, or some man or other type of political figures around the world. They can't bring the ultimate peace that we are all looking for in this globe, this earth. The peace that we are all looking for in the human family is the peace that comes from the Prince of Peace himself. That's Jesus Christ. And until Christ comes back, or Christ and his people bring the peace and the gospel of the kingdom, then we'll see these wars continue to happen. It hasn't got better in the Middle East. They've had plenty of sightings and agreements between the Arabs and for some of the ones in Egypt who signed recently with Israel and so was the uh, United Arab Emirates. We're going to sign with them. It's stalled. So there have been sightings and many agreements over the years, decades. But it hasn't got better. It's got worse. And this is the worst outbreak of violence in almost the history of Israel. So we may be on the brink of something very big that will affect us right down here in the little old New Zealand. 
And my warning is to this country, on the brink of our elections, and my warning to the politicians and every Kiwi family, that you could not stay still, stay silent, when you see graphically broadcast on social media the execution of innocent people and babies being decapitated, that you carry on your life and just say, oh well, that's them. I'm not a religious person, which is Kiwi's favorite line. This is a nice country to live in. Keep your, keep your Jesus Christ out, Brian. Well, I got something to tell you, you clown. We've had enough of my country being ransacked and hijacked by the wokey liberal left, by the transgender movement, and by everybody else that's anti-Christ and anti-Christian. I'm giving you a warning. We're taking our nation back. And it's time to make New Zealand Christian again. So the warning is going out. We are not taking any more of your inactivity, your, your chasing of money, and what's, what you do is separate yourself from the issues. I hope and pray that the polls tomorrow, there might be a ballot box revolution. But it's got to be a miracle, because I hardly put my faith in the public of this country who would vote for the Greens, 15% of this nation vote for the Greens, who are actually pushing and supporting Hamas and the Palestinian cause to take and wipe Israel off the, off the globe. How could you have a party in Parliament and let that happen? And then there are Labour MPs who agree with them. And when they asked Luxton Peters and Seymour for a response, they were like a limp. Well, just look at Luxton's head. I, I'll get in trouble now. You can tell I've had enough. I've had enough of this, and I think that today, as we stand for Israel, um, I pray that somehow something will break in our country to get us back on track again, to give our country back again, and get Christ back again in our nation. That's what we need. And so, I say, God bless Israel. God bless the God of Israel. God bless the Israel of God. And I'll leave you with this final scripture in Romans, as Paul said. He said there, in chapter 10, verse 1, My greatest heart's desire and my prayer to God is that Israel might be saved. He was talking about Israel receiving their own Messiah, Jesus Christ. And I pray, Israel, that this would be the beginning of your salvation and seeing your fellow brother, your Messiah, Jesus Christ, accepted in the religion of our brothers and sisters over there in Israel. So God bless you. Thank you so very much. Have a happy day. Thank you.